Funding for the following program has been provided in part by Human Resources Development Canada through the Youth Employment Strategy. Hi, welcome to Working On It. I'm Chris Verdovsky. And I'm Roger Sampson. This show, funded in part by HRDC, is about young people making a go of it in the world of work. That's right. We've got people starting their own business, internships, programs that you can apply for, and very interesting guests. Mm -hmm. We've got a great uh, show lined up for you. We're going to look at a program in Goose Bay. That's right. Chris LeDrew is going to be playing a few fantastic tunes. And we're also going to interview Nikki Temple and Stefan DeLille. They're here from Hempware. Then we're going to have uh, a little commentary from Steve Barnes, who's going to give us his two cents worth on uh, how to start your own business. And Claire Doyle is here. He's the Acting Dean of Education at MUN with his words of wisdom. Mm -hmm. So don't touch that dial. We're going to give you a great half hour. First up, we're going to be starting in Goose Bay, aren't That's we? That's right. Well, the Linkages program in Goose Bay is a really great one. It's been operating for a few years. It's a fantastic initiative, and it's doing a lot to employ local people in the community. Listen up now to the deal on the Labrador Friendship Center. This is the Labrador Friendship Center in Goose Bay. It's called a Friendship Center because it hosts a bunch of different programs and groups for just about any type of person. They do lots of community-oriented projects, but they also offer an employment program to Goose Bay youth. This program is called Linkages. Uh, you may have a picture of something that you really want to do with your life, and then uh, this gives you an opportunity to get to experience that uh, that's out there, and uh, you may realize that's not the job you want to do and then we guide you to go through the whole process of getting into the school finding out about yourself and uh, hopefully finding some full-time employment for you in the near future linkages is a program in which participants gain work experience by working with local organizations the linkages program offers a six-month wage subsidized work placement and provides career guidance through workshops, bi-weekly chat sessions, and one-on-one -on -one counseling. I think participants learn a lot about themselves in the program. Uh, I have to keep in mind that uh, the, a lot of youth that we deal with in linkages are youth classed at risk. And what I mean by at risk is that uh, they either have low self-esteem, they have very little education, uh, they need motivators in their life, and that's what linkages is really equipped to deal with. I had a small child. Nobody really wanted to hire a, a new mother, anyway, with a small baby. And I had resumes put in everywhere in Goose Bay because I wanted to get out the house, I wanted to go back to work. And then I heard about this program, and the placement it got me is exactly what I love. It's the most perfect job ever, I think. I'd love to stay there. Like, I found I was ready to be able to go out there, which before, like, I found I was too shy or never had enough confidence in myself, but it gives me the confidence to know that uh, I am capable of going out there and doing what I want to do. When I went in, I didn't have no training whatsoever. I'm operating an embroidery machine, which I didn't even know what it was. Now, uh, people come in, like, and they want to design plan something, and, like, I got to set it up on the computer and, like, put it all up. And, like, even my boss now, sometimes she looks at me and asks is my opinion or asks is me what would I do. So, like, you know, that makes me feel pretty good. I think the program is a wonderful program and more communities should have them. And just, I think a lot of people should apply for them. It's, it will benefit you. Is there anything I can help you with? Yes, uh, I'm wondering if you could find uh, a book, a Reader's Digest I'm actually looking for. By the time the Linkages program ends, these participants will have acquired knowledge, experience, and confidence. Whether they decide to find another job or go back to school, they will have taken the first step toward career development. Yes, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Uh, thank you very much. You're please. welcome. The people in Happy Valley Goose Bay are totally supportive of this program. I mean, I think it's incredible. They've never had a problem uh, getting intern placements for these folks. That is 
Fantastic. And they all look really successful, yep. too, which is great. They're loving what they're doing. Well, right now we have a fantastic number. We have Chris LeDrew. He's a local guy mm -hmm. and hugely yep. talented. And you are just going to fall in love now the once. In fact, I have a really funny story to tell because a oh, yeah. friend of mine really loves Chris LeDrew, mm -hmm. right? And always talks about how fantastic Chris LeDrew is, as does everybody else in yep. St. John's. But whenever something good happens in his life, like he wins something mm -hmm. or he finds something that looks really cool, really good, he goes, yeah. hey, that's really Chris LeDrew. So seriously, he thinks Chris LeDrew is totally wicked. So uh, Chris LeDrew is a wicked thing. Wicked thing. So here he is, Mr. Wicked himself with Come Along, Play Along. There goes the girl I love She's married to some guy And all those promises she made she'll keep Still I can't stop dreaming of Those sparkle diamond eyes That shine so bright I'm awakened from my sleep Oh baby, why did you come along? You are something that I'll never ever have Oh baby, why can't you move along? All my friends are having such a big laugh she knows me as a friend But I wonder Does she notice me The way I notice Every move She makes She stands And sits and bends And strolls around So gracefully I pinch myself To make sure I'm awake And that was Come Along, Play Along by Chris LeDrew. In the studio right now, we have Nikki Temple and Stefan DeLille from Hempware. Welcome to the show, folks. Hello. Thanks for coming. Hi. No problem. Good to have you here. I want to start off with the obvious question. What is hemp and uh, how is it different than uh, marijuana? Uh, hemp is actually the strongest natural fiber known to man. And he got his strength in his, because it's so high, he, they grow over two meters high, so that's the strength than they get compared to cotton who's really small and they gotta wave it together. And the big difference between marijuana and hemp is the THC level. Marijuana got around 12% and more of THC. And uh, hemp is like 0.3% and less. What does THC mean? Uh, THC is it's a long word, but like actually that's the... Substance of marijuana that gets you high. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's so what THC is. If you roll is. a hemp joint, you're, you're not gonna get stoned off. Not at all. Yeah. Not even if you smoke okay. the field of it. Yeah. How did the store come about? Uh, Stefan and I actually wanted to stay in Newfoundland for the summer. We were planning on leaving and uh, we couldn't find jobs for the summer. So uh, we decided to create our own job and this is where the venture came from. Wow, Excellent. that's yeah. a great yeah. idea. Yeah. <laughs> now, I know you say, I mean, hemp is a natural product, so obviously it's really important for us to use natural products. But what are the other benefits, do you think? Um, like I said before, like, uh, it doesn't use any pesticides or herbicides, it grows much quicker. You can get um, four times as many sheets of paper out of a field of hemp than what you can out of a field really? of tree per acre. Yep. Um, and also it's very durable, it's a very durable fiber, it lasts up to five times longer than what a cotton product would last. It's very comfortable and the more you wear and wash hemp, the more comfortable it gets, it breaks in very nice. Really? Yep. Great. 
When you started your business, you had some, some thoughts in your mind about what the challenges or the obstacles would be. Uh, what were those and, and how are they different than the, the challenges and, and obstacles that you face now on a daily basis? Well, actually, we didn't really think about anything when we opened the store. We were, <laughs> both of us were just, just thinking about getting yeah, a job. We right were 21 on, years right old, on. and we figured we were going to make some money for the summer before we left. So we really didn't put a lot of thought in it that way. We definitely uh, had our share of challenges. Uh, so we did have a few problems along the way, and I think it made us stronger and better for that. But uh, definitely our focus has changed since we opened the store mm -hmm. in yep. many ways regarding, like, our target market, who our customer is, and things like that. So... Yeah. Well, you mentioned earlier to us that um, a lot of provinces are actually now growing hemp. How easy is that to do? Well, it's not easy to grow hemp, really. You can... Well, you need at least 10 acres. Now, the, the regulation, you need at least at least 10 acres to grow hemp, to have a permit. And uh, after that, like, but you can grow hemp in Russia, you can grow hemp... Like in any climate. Pretty yeah. much any well, climate, they got different brands. Okay. Yeah. Right. I know you guys are wearing hemp too, right? Yep. This is a hemp product here, her lovely dress, and your pants are, as well yeah. as your t-shirt. Sure. Yeah. And maybe we should make note of some things here that are on the table, because these are all natural products, right? Yes, they are, or else some of them are recycled products. So all hemp. So, and I was looking at this earlier, and this is not for holy water. This is for soap or, or, or anything holder. else, but yeah. this is made of hemp here. Hemp concrete, yeah. My gosh. And there's some lovely hats here. What else do we have here? What is your biggest seller here? Our biggest seller that would be on the table, I would say, um, is probably like our lip balm, like smaller products like that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we've got a sweatshirt there that is made out of hemp as well, and that's a really good seller. And that, that bag, that blue bag that's on the corner mm -hmm. there, is probably our yeah. best-selling bag right now. Hmm. Yeah, and you're going to get a different price point. It all depends on the quality of a hemp. We could sell you a bag for, for $15, or the blue bag behind is $55. So there is a different quality okay. in the fiber. It all depends how it's weaved. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. You guys are doing some, some of your own manufacturing? Is that Actually, right? it's not hemp. We're, it's EcoWise, which is an, another okay. company that me, uh, Stefan, my brother-in-law, have started. And we do uh, things like reusable coffee filters, and there's a few local stores carrying right. them as well. We do a guitar strap, and also we've got a line of pet products. And are you that just we do as selling well. those in the city, or is that? No, we're actually um, we're actually trying to get into the states now, but we're selling them nationally. Okay, yeah, right across Canada. Wow, great! Yeah. That's great to be able to provide that service, I guess, because I guess it's a new market, right? Especially for Newfoundland. Yes, it is. It's, yeah, it's different, and I guess there's there's places out there, but it's really important to inform. And yeah, and it's nice to have yeah. alternatives too, because I mean, when you're getting into the pet line, you've you've got leather, or else you have nylon. Other than that, you don't have. That's basically what the products mm -hmm. are made of. So it's really good actually mm -hmm. starting to go mainstream, and that's where we're trying to put our products into the mainstream versus just not just hemp stores. We're talking a little bit about uh, manufacturing products. I want to switch gears there for, uh, for a minute and talk about how do you manufacture a partnership? How do you guys work together professionally? Gee, well, we work together in many ways, not just professionally. Um, actually, we're partners in life as well, and I think that's uh, one good thing uh, about us. We're actually friends before we did get into our little partnership okay. there. Great. So, uh, actually, there's no problem at all. We get along really well. You don't get together. tired of each other day and night? Not at all, actually. <laughs> it's actually a pleasure to work with them. Do you Aww. have different roles, or like, does one do the books and the other one does the marketing or any of that sort of stuff? Not, not really. Like, I started off doing the books, and not really my favorite thing to do, so I kind of showed Stephanie. Yeah. <laughs> right. And I like the number, so... He's a number man, where I'm definitely okay. not a number woman. But no, we, uh, we actually fit, like if he leaves the store, is working one day, I can usually go in the next day and just pick up where he left mm -hmm. off. Great. So we work really well together. Oh, no. Great. That helps okay. a lot. Now, this is a little bit different again now, but a lot of people, of course, associate hemp, and there's a certain stigma associated. You know, people wonder, you know, what kind of people might be involved or whatever, because it's different, right? Yeah. Something different. What kind of challenges or difficulties have you faced because of being that kind of different store? Well, like, first off, our biggest challenge was our education part when we opened our store. So we went into a lot of schools and stuff and set up um, that way, educating people the difference between mm -hmm. marijuana and hemp. Uh, we ran into some problems there. We had a break and enter. We were first week open, and we also wow. ran into some legal problems. We did get raided six weeks after we were open. Yet we spent a full year in court, court battle, and got stuck with a twenty thousand dollar legal bill at the end of it. So Terrible. we've definitely had our challenges. Yeah. yeah. But we rose up the top of it, so that's the main thing. 
It's really wonderful mm -hmm. that you're able to be successful in spite of all that. And you're really mm -hmm. forging in a new market because this is something that hasn't been tried before in Newfoundland. Yeah, right. And you're doing it quite successfully. And you've opened up another store. You have opened up one in the past in Cornerbrook? Yes, we did. We tried it. We were out there almost for a year. Yeah. That's great. That's yeah. great. Didn't work, but that's all right. You can't win them all. That's right. Well, you keep <laughs> trying. <laughs> keep trying, yeah. Thank you so much for coming on no tonight. Problem. This was really informative Grace. for us. Yeah. And up next, we have Chris LeDrew with... Well, first... I would like to audition to be a Chris LeDoux backup singer. So oh. this is uh, going out to Chris, okay? Someone real! And for those of you who don't happen to understand air guitar language, we have Chris LeDoux with Someone Real. People want to blame each other for the problems they have. When I see them point the finger, I just sit back and laugh You see, I used to be that way But now it's all just come what may Everyone's innocent and arguments can never be won People want to push away the ones that make them feel fine because they think that being hurt is just a matter of time You see, I used to be so mad I'd waste away all my time feeling sad But now I'm doing things I never thought I'd ever get done Cause I don't wanna lose this one I've waited too long for her to come And I'm not gonna blow it by being afraid to show how I feel I don't want to lose this girl She's the best one in the whole wide world And there's no way around it When you know that you found someone real People delve into the past to find the root of their pain Realize the search is almost always in vain Because your roots are where you stand And on your feet is where you land If you remember not to waste your time Jump in the gun I don't want to lose this one I've waited too long for her to come not gonna blow it by being afraid to show how I feel. I don't wanna lose this girl. She's the best one in the whole wide world. And there's no way around it when you know that you found someone real. that they make They're never satisfied till all the sleeping dogs are awake Well in my humble point of view There's just one thing that'll get you through Think about the things you do before they can't be undone gonna blow it by being afraid to show how I feel I don't want to lose this girl she's the best one in the whole wide world and there's no way around it when you know that you found someone Start my own business. What? Another Kool-Aid stand? Oh, shush up, will ya? I got a wicked idea. I'm talking about a real business. I'm gonna be rolling in the dough. You need more than just an idea. You need a, a proper education, a well thought out and researched business plan. You need to be able to work beyond just nine to five. 
And most of all, you need to be prepared. Be prepared? Like when I was in Beavers? Billy was in Beavers. Now, if any of you out there think that you want to start your own business, you have to talk to Steve Burns of Clarenville. Now, he happens to think he knows all there is to know about being an entrepreneur, so you got to listen. From my experience, I think the most important thing for a young entrepreneur to understand is that you need more than a good business idea to succeed. Uh, in today's day and age, you need a solid educational background. Uh, every day I see individuals with a great business idea. It's going to work, they tell me, you know, no questions asked. And they expect us to write a check, for, you know, for the full amount of their business to get them started. Uh, but it takes a lot more than just a good idea to, to be successful. Uh, you know, a young entrepreneur has to do the accounting, marketing, sales, human resources, everything. You know, these are the tasks that they have to do on a daily basis. Uh, you know, whether it be university, community college, or even on-the-job training, you acquire a lot of the skills and abilities you need to be successful. Uh, time management and interpersonal skills, uh, building self-confidence, uh, proposal writing skills, these are some of the things that a solid educational background uh, can give you. Uh, I think if there's one message or, or one secret of success I could give to any person interested in starting your own business, it's uh, get a solid education, be prepared. Owning your own business is uh, more than a nine to five job. So if you're a young person trying to make it happen in the world of work, HRDC has got some uh, information that might be able to help you out. That's right. Now, HRDC funds a website. And this is for all you folks out there who want to know anything at all about jobs, jobs, and more jobs. It's a really great resource because it gives you all kinds of info about HRDC projects and programs. Mm -hmm. But it also gives you direction on how to get on the bandwagon yourself. And there's also lots of links to other sites that are really relevant in your job search. You can even post your resume in a bank for employers all across the world to look at. So it should be underneath your screen right now. That's www.youth.gc.ca. For those of you folks who want to talk to a human voice, <laughs> give the Youth Info Hotline a call at 1-800-935-5555. They've got information on more than 300 youth programs they have on the go, from fellowships to internships to summer jobs. So uh, if you want to get in touch with them, they'll be able to uh, help you out. Great. Next up in the hot seat, we have Clara Doyle. Clara's the Acting Dean of Education at uh, Munn here in St. John's. Big community person. He's a very good friend of mine. Absolutely. <laughs> My dear. And he's also involved in the uh, local theater scene. Welcome to the show, Clara. Thank you very much. Good to have you here. Just wanted to start off with a question around post-secondary education, since that's your, your field. A lot of people say it's critical to have some sort of post-secondary schooling in order to, uh, to get a job these days. Is that a lot of hype, or what role does, does uh, post-secondary schooling play? Oh, I, I think it, it certainly helps, and studies say that. Uh, it doesn't mean that we can't get through life without a post-secondary mm -hmm. education tried it myself for a while. <laughs> really? And look, and look how I turned out. That's right. Okay. okay. Uh, but I, I, th I think it helps us, uh, you know, get a focus, obviously get some skills, and when you go for an interview, uh, you have that little piece of the world carved out for yourself, mm -hmm. and you say, here's what I can do, here's what I can offer you. But I, I think one of the other big factors, might even be the most important one, is the confidence that, uh, that we get and that people mm -hmm. get. Okay. You know? Great. Yeah. And I know, well, you're at Memorial, and uh, a lot of departments at Memorial have an internship placement for their students. Could you describe a little bit of that process at the education department? Yeah, what we do in, uh, in close to the end of our program, uh, we give a full term, full semester for uh, full term. Sounded like we're waiting to someone to be born. <laughs> a full semester <laughs> to go out into the school systems and do uh, real life work and that helps uh, you know students who will be teachers put into practice some of the uh, uh, great wisdom and knowledge they get from us so it's on the job training very much and uh, as they move towards the end of the internship they very often take full responsibility are, and are working in the same capacity as uh, 
you know, tenured teachers. Great. Well, so it's a, you know, it's very, it's a very useful uh, process in that way. And it's not only learning, learning the job, it's learning about the profession, it's learning to uh, uh, model what the best teachers do. Mm -hmm. At least that's the ideal of it. <laughs> yeah. So I guess the, the relationship between those uh, teacher interns and the actual teacher is a, a pretty critical one, acting sort of as a, a mentor. Uh, can you tell me about the importance of, of mentors, not just in the classroom, but also as your involvement in the community? Yeah, I, I think, Roger, uh, that the whole concept of being a mentor, and it's one that we that we use a whole lot in our programs, mm -hmm. okay. and realizing how essential it is between the learner and, and someone who would be much, much more comfortable. And I think in terms of, of uh, you know, let's say theater that, uh, that we all know about, that the whole business of you, if you care for something, if you love something and you want to pass that on, then, uh, you know, there's a means for the mentorship to work, even though we don't always intend it that way. Yeah. You know? It's just the like everyday Like I'm learning lessons. a whole lot just by being here with you well, two. Well, of course. Okay. In, <laughs> just by being in our presence, of course. Um, and I just want to touch base a little bit on the community theatre, because you and I have been involved with Beothic Street Players for a long time, which is an amateur theatre. Okay. Well, I shouldn't say amateur. It's a community theatre group. They may be High amateur, but standards. they're doing very professional yep. standard work. But um, with regards to making yourself more marketable and things like that, what do you think young people can gain from doing volunteer work like that? Well, I'm back to the confidence word again. And because there's a you know, strong discipline called for, you learn the whole discipline aspect of it. You also learn to be responsible. You learn to work with other people. And if you don't do that, a show doesn't work, for example. Mm -hmm. So there is a tremendous amount of uh, learning, learning there. And as I said before, we can learn through a type of mentoring. And that can be all sorts of combinations of, of that mentoring. But I believe the skills learned, the discipline, and then the biggie again, confidence. I mean, I, I say to my students very often at the end of term, if, I, if there was a gift I could give you, it would be confidence. Mm. And they usually ask for money. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't talk for much because you're only a prof. But he calls him, he is a doctor though. So you call him Dr. Doyle. Dr. Doyle. But he's very humble about it. Well, thank you very much for coming on our show tonight. We really appreciate your words of wisdom. And um, hopefully people can learn from that process here tonight. Thank you very much for joining us on our program tonight. It's our second show, and we'd really like to thank our sponsors, HRDC. They're our funding partners. And uh, who else would we like to thank? Uh, RTW, the oh, giving us this great They're grand. Clothes. They yep. really are. The duds are fantastic, mm -hmm. and the people are great. So if you want some great clothes, go down to RTW. Now, if you'd like to become a part of Roger Sampson's fan club, or you'd like an autographed picture of Roger Sampson, you can just write into Cable 9. Or herself, the queen here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you very much, and tune in next week. See you next time. Good night.